This video considers some of the fundamental information you need to know about the atom, the particles that make up an atom, how those particles are arranged, and so on. By the end of the video, you ought to be able to describe protons, neutrons, and electrons in terms of their relative charge and their relative mass. You need to be able to say how those particles are arranged in an atom, in a basic way. Uh, and you need to be able to use atomic numbers and mass numbers uh, to work out the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in a particular atom. Before we go any further, we should just briefly discuss what we actually mean by atoms. Uh, if we look at the world, in fact the universe around us, uh, we find it to be made of matter, the stuff that we can see and touch and feel, all the different materials uh, that we find with all their different properties. And to a chemist, atoms are simply the very basic building block that matter is made out of. We find just over about a hundred different naturally uh, occurring types of atom. Uh, and the thing that makes one atom different from another is simply the number of the subatomic particles that it's made out of. So we have three basic subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Of course, if you were to study physics, um, you would look even deeper and see that those subatomic particles themselves are made up of even smaller particles. Uh, but you don't need to concern yourself with that at this level for chemistry. For each of those three subatomic particles that we've just introduced, the proton, the neutron, and the electron, you need to be able to recall from memory the relative charge and the relative mass for each of them. Now, that's something that you should have been introduced to at school, so you might want to pause the video at this point uh, and just see if you can already recall that information. We'll start with the relative charge first. Uh, the values are plus one for the proton, zero for the neutron and minus one for the electron. Um, you might be tempted just to describe the proton as positive, the neutron as neutral and the electron as negative, but you do need to be more specific than that and actually give this relative value um, plus one for the proton, minus one for the electron and zero for the neutron. Uh, looking at mass next, uh, we've got values of one for the proton, one for the neutron um, and the electron uh, 0. 0.00054. At school, maybe all you had to say was the electron had no mass or negligible mass. Um, you should be more precise about it um, than that. And this is the correct value. So where in an atom do we find these three types of subatomic particle? Our modern understanding of the atom is that nearly all of its volume is made up of empty space space that's almost empty, apart from the fact that that's where we find the electrons. In the center of the atom, uh, we find a thing called the nucleus. The nucleus we can describe as being small in size, very small compared to the overall uh, volume of the atom, dense in as much as it has a lot of mass for its size, as where near, basically all of the mass, um, or nearly all of the mass of the atom is found and positively charged. And the reason for the, the mass and the charge uh, is because the nucleus is made up of the protons and the neutrons. So you need to describe an atom as consisting of a central nucleus which is small, dense and positive, made up of protons and neutrons, surrounded by, in comparison, a huge amount of empty space where the electrons are found. Earlier on in the video, we said that what makes one type of atom different from another um, is simply the number of the subatomic particles found within it. And you need to be able to use given information about an atom to say how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons are present in one atom. And what you see here is a typical atomic symbol. It's actually sodium, Na. Um, stands for sodium. And you see these two numbers, the 23 at the top on the left and the 11 at the bottom. And it's these numbers that we'll use um, to work out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, we'll start with the number at the bottom, um, which is called the atomic number. Um, it'll be the smallest of the two numbers, um, and it's given the symbol Z. Now we can use the atomic number very simply to tell us the number of protons um, in the atom. So for the sodium atom shown here, 
it has 11 protons. It is in fact the number of protons that defines which element the atom is. So if you take any atom uh, that has 11 protons, it is a sodium atom. And no other element will have just 11 protons in its nucleus. The number at the top, which will be the larger of the two numbers, um, is called the mass number, and it has the symbol A. In both cases, it's a capital letter, so atomic number, capital Z, and mass number, capital A. What does the mass number tell us? Well, it tells us the sum total of the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And this means we can use the two numbers together to work out the number of neutrons. Number of neutrons is the mass number minus the atomic number. So in this case, for sodium, uh, or this atom of sodium, 23, the mass number, minus 11, the atomic number, tells us that there are 12 neutrons present in the atom. An atom can have different numbers of neutrons and still be the same element as long as it has the same number of protons. Well, that leaves electrons to talk about. Uh, how do we know the number of electrons in an atom? We know that because atoms have no overall charge. Uh, and this means that the number of electrons with their 1 minus charge must equal the number of protons with their 1 plus charge. Uh, so the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. Since the number of protons came from the atomic number, then the number of electrons is given by the atomic number as well. So, so, this, so sodium atoms with their 11 protons also have 11 electrons. We need to just say a word of caution here, though, because uh, that's not the case for ions. Ions have gained or lost electrons, depending on their charge, um, and so they will have a number of electrons that is different now from the number of protons present in the atom. So here's one for you to have a go at. Um, how many protons, neutrons and electrons would be in the atom of chlorine shown here? Pause the video and see what you come up with. So you should have said there's 17 protons, 18 neutrons and 17 electrons. 17 protons because the atomic number is 17. 18 neutrons because the mass number, take away the atomic number, is 18 and 17 electrons because the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. We'll take this opportunity to have a look at what happens in the case of an ion. Uh, chlorine forms chloride ions, Cl-, um, and if we look at the charge, it's got a charge of 1-. minus. Now, uh, be careful, the 1- minus doesn't mean that it's lost an electron, that an electron's been subtracted. It means that it's gained an electron. Each electron has a 1- minus charge, uh, and so... Uh, that one minus charge comes from an extra electron present. If it's gained an electron, uh, it'll have 18 electrons rather than the 17 of the neutral atom. So here's a further opportunity to practice. Um, we'll look at both the atom and the ion of strontium. So first of all, the atom. How many protons, neutrons and electrons? Pause the video and work it out. So the answer should be uh, 38 protons from the atomic number, 50 neutrons from the mass number minus the atomic number, and 38 electrons from the atomic number again. Strontium forms a 2 plus ion. So, pause the video again. Uh, how many electrons would you expect to see for a strontium ion? Well, if we work it through, uh, the charge is 2 plus. 2 plus means that it's lost two electrons. Again, be careful. Sometimes it's easy. If you're not thinking to think, oh, plus, that means it's gained something. Um, remember, the two plus shows the charge, um, and so if you, you, go to, you, you gain positive charge by losing the negative electrons. If it's lost two electrons, then we've gone down from 38 to 36 electrons. Finally, we'll just review what we should have learnt in school about how the electrons are arranged within the atom and the idea of shells. Uh, you should have learned some rules at school for filling shells, and it would have said something along the lines of two electrons in the first shell, then that's full. Any further electrons start filling the second shell, and you can get up to eight in the second shell. Then you move on to the third shell, 
uh, put eight electrons in that shell, and you move on to the fourth shell, and by the time you get to calcium, with 20 electrons in the periodic table, you've got two electrons in the fourth shell, and you'd probably have stopped there at school. So as an example, magnesium, atomic number 12, 12 electrons, therefore. Uh, pause the video to see if you remember um, how to do this uh, shell-filling uh, system from school. And you should have said uh, that we get two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and the remaining two go in the th third shell, so two, eight, two. During the A-level course, you'll have to go much deeper than this, and you'll learn about subshells and orbitals and all sorts of other exciting details, and you'll go beyond calcium in the periodic table, but we'll leave it there for the moment.